Welcome back to Play and Trade Guitars. I'm John, that's Zach behind the camera, and this is Play and Trade Guitars, where we play it and trade it. Checking out the brand new Epiphone Firebird 1, a stripped down rock monster. The Firebird was the first guitar with a neck through construction from Gibson, designed by auto designer Ray Diedrich back in the 60s, and this is a nice vintage inspired recreation of that 1963 Firebird 1, done in collaboration with Epiphone and the Gibson Custom Shop. It comes with a hard shell case. I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know about this guitar. I'm gonna put it on the bench and pull it apart, and then of course we're gonna plug it in and play it. At the top, if you're in the market for a Firebird or any other gear, click to buy new gear using our link. You help us make these demos when you buy new gear using our link. In the States, you're gonna get fast free shipping and easy payment plans. And if you're in Europe, check out our Toman link down below too. You can find all of that pinned in the comments or down in the description. And finally, we are giving away a Martin acoustic guitar made in America when we hit 100,000 subscribers. To win that guitar, hit subscribe now, turn on notifications, and make sure you enter via Gleam. All that is also down below. All right, without further ado, let's open up this hard shell case and take a look at this beautiful Inverness green on this one, Firebird 1 from Epiphone. All right, check out this Inverness green. It almost makes me think they're a little inspired by Zach and my... Firebird that we gave away a few years ago. That was a beautiful one. And I'll tell you what, they nailed this color. Inverness green looks fantastic. They went with an Indian laurel fretboard, which to me feels a lot like rosewood. And then this is kind of like the Les Paul Jr. of Firebirds. It's stripped down with one Firebird pickup with Firebirds. The particular sound comes not only from the neck through construction, you basically have this nine ply mahogany and walnut construction, which is like a solid slab wood that they stick these two Firebird wings on. And it lends to part of the iconic sound of a Firebird, but also it's where these pickups are at. And these are Gibson USA Firebird pickups that they're using on these models, and that's impressive. Other than that, simple two controls, wraparound tailpiece. I'll tell you more on the bench. But first look, I love that they went with the banjo tuners too. Excellent choice. Feels like a pretty good weight on this and a nice uh, comfortable kind of medium thicker neck, I'd call it, but we'll get full measurements. So let's head over to the bench and pull this apart. Remember, if you're in the market, click to buy using our link. All right, starting up at the top of the headstock, you got that iconic reverse Firebird headstock. I love that. And then it's also great that they went with the, the banjo tuners. Uh, just a great look. It's kind of like being a right-handed player and having to tune up a left-handed guitar though. I will warn you, it is a little awkward. <laughs> it takes a little bit of getting used to. Nice neck profile on this. Indian Laurel board. They've got Mother of Pearl dot inlays on here. And then, like I said, the neck itself is going to be a nine ply mahogany and walnut, uh, basically a laminate pressed together layers of those two woods that comes all the way through as one piece in this sort of block. And then these wings are literally just glued on these mahogany wings. And that's part of the design of the Firebird. This one, I love how they just keep it simple. One Gibson USA Firebird pickup, a wraparound lightning tailpiece, and the two controls, volume and tone. Doesn't get any more simple than that. So why don't we loosen the strings and pull those off so we can get a look under the hood. Nut comes in at 1.67 inches. First fret, just like I said, a medium 0.84 inches up to 0.99 inches at the 12th. So it's got some meat to the neck for sure, which I like. You have the comfort cut on the mahogany wings, which is nice. And then again, the neck through body construction, the actual slab itself comes in at 1.6 inches thick. Okay, so it's just hiding the route. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. So it's hiding one small route to the, to the bridge pickup. Flip up the single Gibson USA Firebird pickup. Lead reissue Firebird is what's stamped on the back of it. There's a patent number on the back too. Nice vintage recreation here. We'll go ahead and flip on the multimeter and get a reading. 6.8 in that pickup. How are you even supposed to get at that? Oh. It's not even connected. The truss rod is straight up not connected in this guitar. <laughs> Did you see that? I missed it. Holy shit, you just dropped it back in? It just like fell in. It's not connected to anything. The whole barrel, well you filmed how the whole barrel was out, right? Mm -hmm. It just fell back in the pocket. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a new one. I will also say I did see some of these frets are lifting. I can get my nail under that one. 
Nice Epiphone and Gibson custom logo on the back control cavity cover. And uh, there you go, CTS Pots 500K, hand wired. We'll try for a weight here, it gets a little awkward. Uh, looks like six pounds, uh, eight ounces, we'll call it 6.5 pounds, nice and light. And then flipping it around for an initial reaction, it does have a nice, healthy medium neck, a little bit on the thicker side. Good ring to it. I did have to do a little bit of setup. Um, the truss rod seems to be free floating in space in there. I don't know what, what's going on there. <laughs> but um, I did make a truss rod adjustment and I did lower this bridge down. It came with the action a little bit high. But I've got it feeling good in my hands now. Nice ring to this guitar. Remember, if you're in the market for this guitar or any others, click to buy new gear using our link. You'll find that pinned in the comments or down in the description. It does help us make these demos. So thanks for doing that. Now comes my favorite part. Let's see how it sounds. I'll plug it in. I'll show you clean tones. We'll dirty it up and then let it scream behind the track. And stick with me to the end. I'll give you my raw, honest reaction to playing this guitar and a final score. So drop a comment as we go and I'll see you on the other side. Let's get to it. <laughs>
All right, the Epiphone Firebird 1 at a current price of $12.99. It's a stripped down version of the Firebird with that single Firebird pickup. You stuck with me to the end, so I'm gonna give you my raw, honest reaction to this guitar and a final score. I based that final score on three overall categories. That's overall playability, overall sound, and overall value. First, starting with probably the top point category, overall playability. I love the shape of this neck. Uh, it really ranks as kind of like a medium profile neck. It has a little bit more meat on it. It's very comfortable to play, and I like a neck with a little bit more meat on it. Neck shape is fantastic. It didn't give me any trouble. The Firebird is so easy to access the upper register anyways. There's just nothing to get in the way. It's also kind of cool that they give you two different points to place the strap. So you can kind of choose. Um, I choose the one that's behind the neck um, itself. And I found that the guitar was actually well balanced. Sometimes with this long shaped Firebird, particular, particularly with banjo tuners, it can be, it can feel like it's a really long guitar and sometimes want to pull on you. This one might have just a tad of that, but not much and it didn't affect me while playing it. The feel of the Indian Laurel, I really wish they put Rosewood and that's kind of a value discussion for this price tag. However, the Indian Laurel, I always think feels pretty good. It's not Rosewood at this price, it should be Rosewood. That'd be really nice to see from Epiphone. Uh, but feel-wise, I'm going to go ahead and give this guitar a 9.2 overall on feel. When it comes to sound, I did really like the Gibson USA Firebird pickup, and there's nothing like Firebird pickups. They really are in a class of their own in terms of sound. So if you have a guitar collection, owning a Firebird, a high-quality Gibson USA Firebird pickup in this Epiphone, if you're only going to have one Firebird for a kind of occasional use, or if it's your jam, uh, this is a great way to go about it, I think, because it sounds really good. Nothing about the playability or the sounds got in my way at all on this guitar. I have played some, like, or I, I'm referencing, I just had an early 90s Firebird come through that had pickups that actually read much hotter. It would read, like, 22 in the bridge, whereas this one reads, like, 7, 8. And so I'm not sure what the technical difference is. I think the other ones probably sound a tad better, but um, these still do the Firebird thing. So I'll go ahead and give it a, uh, I'm gonna give it an 8.8 .8 on overall sound. And then value, I will be honest with you, it's expensive for what it is. It does include a hard shell case. It does include the banjo tuners. It's got these great finish options. Uh, it's got the Gibson USA pickup. That said, there were some quality control issues on this one out of the box. Um, I guess with Firebird being neck through construction, I guess it, it kind of makes sense to me that the way that they do the truss rod is they basically just drop it down in the cavity, but there's gotta be a way to secure it. This one had like a free floating truss rod, which was just bizarre. Um, there were some lifting frets, and I will tell you that consistently, consistently with Epiphone, be prepared to have it set up professionally or learn to set up guitars yourself because this one, the action came quite a bit higher. It did need a truss rod adjustment. And some of that can be expected based on climate and these guitars moving the vast distances that they're moving from production. Um, but get yourself a good setup if you don't know how to set up a guitar yourself. That all kind of feeds into the value as well. Um, in terms of what it is, I think they nailed it with the vintage aesthetic. I love the 1963 character. And they did a really nice job. That finish is to die for. It looks absolutely gorgeous. And the other colors look great too. I'm going to give this a score, assuming that I got one from the factory that didn't have the issues I mentioned. Because for a guitar this price, it should not have any quality control issues, lifting frets, floating truss rod, whatever that was. Um, so if you got one that was perfect out of the box, granted, it might need a little bit of setup. I'm going to go ahead. I'll give it a 7.6 on overall value. That's gonna bring us to a total score of 8.5. Now, also keep in mind, Epiphone does still make, I don't know for how much longer, they do still make the Firebird, which costs like $649. It's still in production. We've reviewed that one too. That's a fantastic guitar. If you wanna spend $1,300 and get this aesthetic, I see the value there to a point. If you want just a Firebird that sounds fantastic from Epiphone, check out the $649 one. I'm not gonna steer you away from that because I've played that too and it sounds fantastic. Um, you know, this has a few more appointments on it. It's got the hard shell case, the banjo tuners and all that. But all in all, overall score of 8.5, not bad. Impressive sounds and feel from the Epiphone Firebird 1. Check out our video on the Epiphone Firebird 5. Looks beautiful. And remember, if you're in the market for any new gear, click to buy new gear using our link. It really does help us make these demos. You get fast free shipping and easy payment plans. Europe, we didn't forget about you. Toman link down below too. Thanks for watching. I'm John, that's Zach, and this is Playing Trade Guitars. See you on the next video. Thanks for hanging out. Thank <laughs> you.